Well, kind of like we just talked about in there and on the field, couldn't be more proud of, of a group of men who just, I really believe they outwork everybody. They are made of the right stuff. They've created a culture that is second to none. And a night like tonight validates all their hard work and certainly uh, honored to represent the Pac-12 North and certainly extremely excited about winning the Pac-12 championship tonight. Go ahead and take questions for coaches and athletes down in front here. Coach, no one's been able to run on Utah all year long, yet today you guys put up 239 yards on the, on the ground against them. What were the keys to making that happen today? It was a little bit of everything. It starts with the players, uh, their commitment to establishing the run, their film study, the way that they practice this week, the way that the line blocked, the way that Herb carried out his fakes and ran with the ball as well, the way that CJ and Travis and Cyrus all ran the ball. And quite frankly, I think maybe these guys just all week long just got a little bit tired of hearing that we weren't the more physical team. Um, and, you know, it gives you a little bit of an edge. And But it was all it was all us. It was all, you know, the, these guys, these players, just they made up their mind that they were going to establish the line of scrimmage, and they did. Josh? CJ, did you guys, as players, did you guys take some offense to, to talk about their run defense all week? Was that, was that a motivating factor for you? Uh, I definitely put a little chip on our shoulders. Uh, we don't try to focus on the outside noise too much, but uh, you know, hearing that they're the most physical team in the Pac-12 definitely uh, wanted to, made us want to come out here and just work even more harder. In the middle. CJ, as you hit the hole there for that 70-yard touchdown, what are the thoughts kind of growing through your head as you see all that green grass ahead of you? Uh, just get to the end zone, man. Just, I mean, just get pretty much get to the end zone. Touchdown. Stay right there. Kayvon, have you felt like you've been getting a whole lot better? Have you felt yourself getting better throughout the season? And then also, what was it like to play a really good game as a freshman in this big of a game? I mean, the proof is in the pudding. We put a lot of work into just practice and every day and just going to work, um, putting 110%. So, I mean, I feel like I've gotten a lot better, um, and I'm going to continue to get better. And I guess it's, you, could, you could say it's only up from here. You know, as long as I keep putting in the work, it's just a good results. Go ahead, Colin. Right here on the right. Oh, yeah, Coach, with uh, the outside talk about the Pac-12 not being a physical conference, this game, you know, the number one run defense in the nation, you know, your defense, it's held teams below 100 yards rushing. What do you think kind of says about the state of the Pac-12 right now? Well, first thing, I wonder why it's so quiet in here. I mean, it was pretty loud and happy in that locker room, so hopefully, you know, you guys are excited <laughs> about this stuff too now. Um, there's, If you look at our defensive front seven and theirs, as well as both offensive lines, there are a lot of NFL players, a lot of Sunday players on both rosters. And I think what you see happening is uh, the recruiting landscape of the Pac-12 is getting strong really, really quickly. Uh, development is at a premium right now. And we've taken monster steps in the direction of uh, establishing ourselves as that kind of a team. And, you know, it's all a tribute to these guys, the way they attack the blueprint every single day. So I think it speaks loudly of the direction of the Pac-12. Here in the left. Second row. Coach, uh, Kyle Whittingham was obviously in here before you guys. And he mentioned two things. Your linebackers tonight and your pressure, your pressure schemes. Can you talk about those two factors for us? Absolutely. It starts with the guys up front, you know, tying up their offensive linemen and tight ends, allowing our linebackers to play free. Um, with that, it goes with the fact that Troy and, um, and uh, Samson and um, Isaac, they did so much, Lamar, they, they studied so much film, they felt like they had a really good beat on what they were doing as it relates to tight end sets, shifts and motions, communicating. Uh, getting calls passed down, passing off crossers, knowing when they're in man, knowing when they're zoning off, and then just flat out playing with physicality and toughness. So uh, tremendous job by them, just putting in time, grinding at it, and it showed up on the field tonight. In the back. Coach, congrats on the win. Um, Thank you. you. You guys were four, or you held Utah on third down, 4-14. Can you just talk about how suffocating the defense was tonight? The defense was off the charts. I also saw that they had zero red zone scoring chances, if that is accurate as well. So uh, when you look at those numbers right there, total offensive plays, total offensive yards, you look at a defense that was just committed to being a dominant force tonight. Now, they did it in the run game. They did it in the pass game. You know, they made a couple of plays as well, and credit to them because that's a really good football team. But the way our defense played tonight, the way they flew to the football, took on blockers, struck blockers, shed blocks, um, I, I can't say enough about them. They certainly were, were such a huge factor in the game. Coach, Brady Breeze was obviously all over the field tonight, whether it was making tackles or grabbing that interception. Can you just talk about 
one, how much better he's been getting throughout the year, and then also just how important it was that he set the tone early for this win. Well, you knew they were going to line up in two and three tights, that they were going to, again, shift in motion, try to get downhill with power, counter, inside zone, outside zone, split zone. So your safeties are going to have to play big, right? They run the alleys for you. They're the support players. Uh, Brady just did a great job getting downhill when he had to. Also did a good job playing out there center field when he had to make that interception um, and just play with great eye discipline tonight and physicality, and it certainly made a big difference. All right, Warren. Coach, I'm happy for you. Hey, um. <laughs> I love it. And we got and we got some more juice in the room. Good. Hey, let's how, go. How's your headset? And what happened on that play to cause you to throw it? <laughs> That's what I said. And uh, I'm curious. Um, in your in your game plan, did you want Justin to run? Did you think that was a um, or was that a good plan? An obviously good plan. The last one. I'm sorry. The last question. The headset Justin, was that I just felt that the ball was being. Play was being held to the point where now we lost an advantage um, and that we were going to have to burn a timeout. So I shouldn't do that to the headset. The headset had nothing to do with it. Um, but the other question, I'm sorry, I didn't hear it. Justin running the ball, was that key yes. in your offense? It was. It was. We made that decision. You know, um, we haven't run him much this year, but there's a reason he's been upright all year and we've won, you know, worked our way and then won the conference championship. We've never had to play without our quarterback. But tonight, the way that they play – cover one man coverage they squeeze the ends they press your wide receivers Justin was going to have to use his feet to make some plays and uh, he was he was outstanding all right if you guys had played a Justin's played an easier opponent than Auburn in your opener you guys might be in the playoff talk right now is that a flaw in the system or how do you do that <sighs> system you know I don't know I don't know if I'll get in trouble in talking about systems but I think there has to be a lot of weight placed on winning your conference. You can go through your conference and win your conference, especially in one that where you play nine conference games like we do. Uh, that has to and needs to carry a lot of weight going forward. Because look, these guys will tell you, they want to play the best teams in the country all the time. And there's no way that we're going to go away from that mentality to try to schedule down to appease you know, whatever I don't want to, I guess I should stop there before I get myself in trouble, right? Look, these guys, they deserve to find out how good they are by playing against the best, so we're going to keep doing that. Right here on the right. Coach, to, to win this game today, you had to win in the trenches, both sides of the ball, and you did. Do you feel that that is a Mario Cristobal stamp you are putting on this team, the physicality uh, that we're seeing out of it? it it's, it's their stamp. I refuse to, I don't have, I have zero credit in this thing. This is all about the players. This is all about the way that they work, the way that they grind, and the way that they learn and develop. I mean, these guys have learned a lot about themselves as a team, as a family. Um, and that, that's the secret sauce. The, the blueprint is there, we put it down, but they're the ones that attack. And if you attack it a certain way, you get results like this, and that's what's transpiring. But, and that's, and that's where all the credit needs to go. You know, it's got, it's them. Right here in the middle. <laughs> Coach, uh, this senior yeah. class was four and eight their That's freshman right. year, yeah. and now they've got a conference championship. How great for the program does that feel? It's validation. It's validation for all that they've done. I don't know if anyone here has been through a four and eight season. I've been through one of those, and it's it's about as horrible and as miserable as it gets. And it causes some people to break down, some people to quit, some people to leave, and then there's a core that just puts their foot in the ground and says, we're gonna change things. And they had to change things in the midst of change, right? Because there were coaching changes, right? There was all kinds of staff turnover. That is a special group of men to be able to do that. That speaks loudly and speaks worlds about what they are in terms of their DNA, in terms of what they are as people. I'm very passionate about that because, you know, the world would be a better place if you had guys that would grind out like they did if that was what the way it was, you know, for everything. They, they deserve all the credit in the world. Back left. Coach, congrats again. How excited are you on a scale of 1 to 100 about tonight's uh, <laughs> victory? No, it, blow, it blows that away. I'm excited for these guys. I always, look, I, because of what they do, I just, I wanted, I always said it, and I, I told you, I should have told the other guys, yeah, I wanted to see these guys dance in ticker tape. You know, I wanted to see them have that moment 
all right, I don't you see, I don't wear any rings, I don't wear any of that stuff. I wanted this experience for them because now they have that as part of life. They, they could say that they were the very best at what they did because of their accomplishment throughout the season and again tonight. So huge, love it. All right, back center. CJ, what are some of the emotions going through your mind as you uh, um, are named MVP of this game? Oh man, first of all, I gotta give it all the glory to God and then I couldn't have done anything on that field without the old line, man. They made the holes and they paved the way for me to make those big runs, so I gotta give it all up to them. Right here in the center. CJ, kind of going off of that, you're joining LaMichael James, the second most all time rushing in the Pac-12 championship game. What does it mean to be joined by someone in that class? Oh man, it's great, man. LaMichael James, you know, he was a legend over here in Oregon, so to be uh, in the likes of him, that's just a good blessing. CJ, do you know him? Have you met LaMichael? Uh, not not uh, personally, but I'm, I've like contacted him like through social media and stuff. Yeah, burgers. Oh yeah, I have been, his killer burgers. Those things are pretty good actually. <laughs> <laughs> Get it was uh, CJ and Kayvon uh, for both of you guys. Uh, with the seniors, obviously they built things up in four and eight, but you know you guys are young. Penn is young. I mean, what's it kind of say right now? The future of Oregon football being built kind of on a Rose Bowl trip right now. Uh. I would just say that it's just gonna keep motivating, keep motivating us to keep working hard. This is just a stepping stone in the right direction. We're gonna keep going up from there. All right, we got one more. We'll take one more back. So we got KT's answer. Oh, oh, sorry, team. I forgot the question. You can go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like it's, as far as you guys were the, the sort of underclassmen, you know, you know, that's kind of the upgrade and walk out for the one. Yeah, we, I think we made it a point to um, let our seniors go out with a bang. And, you know, we all kind of just bought into, we put in the work, so why not um, bask in the success? And, you know, I don't see any uh, decline. I don't see anybody that wants to quit. You know, everybody wants to live up and fill the shoes. So, yeah. Amen. All right, now last one. Right. Coach, I'd like, well, actually, I'd like to get all three of you to, to uh, talk about this. Coach, I'm not sure if you've been to the Rose Bowl on New Year's Day. And I know CJ and Kayvon, you haven't. You may have gone since you were from Los Angeles, but just your thoughts about being able to play in the granddaddy of them all on New Year's Day and just the ambiance of, of that game and what it means. For me, it just sounds like another Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> I'm repeating what he said, it's another Tuesday. Ready to get back to work, ready for the opportunity. These guys are gonna get some time off because they need it and they deserve it. Um, it is a tremendous honor. It is absolutely, I've never been to the Rose Bowl before, watched it, know the pageantry and everything that goes with it. It is uh, as big as a stage as there is in college football. And the best part about it is that these guys and their teammates have earned it 100%. It was not given to them.